guys, it's time for another episode of Below the Iceberg, the one and only podcast where we talk to real life two comma club winners. Whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a wannabe entrepreneur, or you've been in business for a while, you're sure to pick up little golden nuggets of advice from these million dollar entrepreneurs. Now, if you don't know what a two comma club winner is, it is where they have built one funnel inside the ClickFunnels software and sold $1 million through just that one funnel, which is absolutely awesome. In today's episode, I'm chatting with Enoch Dennis, who went from being a Walgreens assistant to a two comma club award winner with his wife, Sue. So let's dive in and find out what they do and how they achieve the two comma club with very little ad spend and a sprinkle of magic from Facebook groups. Let's dive in. So welcome Enoch to Below the Iceberg. Thank you, thank you, Pauli. How are you doing? I am good, thank you. I am so grateful that you've taken some time out of your day today to come and chat with me. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting me. I, I am so excited. Thank you for inviting me. That's good. That's good. I want to say absolutely awesome achievement for getting a Two Comma Club Award with ClickFunnels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what I like to do with my guests is I like to go uh, have a look at their social media profiles and check out their stats because it's a good indication to our audience what's possible with big followings and what's possible with very small followings. Yeah. Um, so I had a quick little look at your profiles and you don't have a big following. I couldn't find any big followings. Uh, is that right? You are correct. <laughs> so that is super awesome, really, that you've got such a small following, but you're still able to achieve a two comma club. So do you want to tell our listeners exactly what it is you do and what's, what's your business called? Okay. So um, I'm going to talk about only one business here. And this is um, our um, home care consulting uh, firm that my wife and I, uh, we own. Uh, my wife is Sue Dennis and we, we own a home care consulting firm. So what we do we help um, healthcare professionals who are burned out, they are overworked, they get overwhelmed. So we help them make that transition from being on the bedside to actually owning their own home care agencies. All right. Okay. That's cool. So is that what you achieve the two comma club with? Yes. That two comma club is, is for that. Yep. Okay. And what's, and what's the name of that business? It's Home Care Buses United. All right. Okay. Awesome. So when did you actually hit the Two Comma Club? That was um, 2021. 2021. So not that long ago. No, just a few months away from, from, from that. And was it, was it a goal to achieve the Two Comma Club or did it just happen? Um, it was a goal. So I remember 2018 when we went, the first time my wife and I, we went to, to FHL and we were already using, you know, click funnels were already in the environment, but we went to FHL live 2018 and then we saw their, the awards ceremony. So we're yeah. like, wow. And we said, it's almost like we both said at the same time, next time we come here, we're going to walk <laughs> that stage. <laughs> and then, um, 2019, we we're trying to go. I, I'm not sure what happened. We were not able to, to go. 2020, of course, with COVID and everything that happened, and um, uh, we didn't go. And then 2021, I think it was virtual. So, yeah, virtual. Yeah. And then 2022, we we're like, okay, next year we're going. And then 2021, we hit the two comma. And you're like, hey, actually, it happened exactly as you said. Next time we go, we're going to walk that stage. <laughs> so when you, um, when you realized you'd hit the two comma club, were you actually watching the numbers or did it just happen? And then you went, oh, we've done it. So we knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. Uh, we were watching the numbers and kind of like, okay, when is it going to happen? Like, <laughs> day is it going to happen? So we knew it was going to happen. And then... Um, 
I don't remember if it's on my phone or my wife's phone, but when it actually happened, we took a, a screenshot. We were like, oh my God, here's the same <laughs> that, that just went through. There we go. Take a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you have a party or a little celebration? Did you, what happened? Um, it wasn't much, but we did, you know, we did, uh, what did we do? I, I'm not sure. We probably just took a few of our staff uh, members out and, and, you know, eat and, and you know, enjoy uh, the, the moment, but, and then get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so did you just carry on as normal then? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I want to do a little bit of a rewind now. I want to take you back to your childhood. Okay. So what, what was your childhood like? Ah, my childhood was, um, I, had a, I, I had a cool childhood. It was not like, you know, a lot of struggling and things like that. Um, um, I did not grow up with my mother or my father. I grew up with, with, uh, with my auntie because of other things that were going on. And um, I was always kind of like uh, um, trying to be by myself, trying to be in my books, studying, doing my, my homework. And um, I, you know, stay away from, from people. That was my kind of like my, my superhero cap. Right. By being, having good grades. And, you know, everybody got that got everybody respected you for having good grades and you know being the best student ever so and, and then, where, did, where did you grow up i grew up in haiti all right okay yeah. and where do, where do you live now then in florida all right okay so when you were a child what was the dream what did you want to be when you grew up ha huh. several so i think the first thing that i wanted to actually be when i was little I remember I wanted to be a priest and the only reason why I wanted to be a priest because I I going to church I realized that the priest was like you know everybody was kind of like going to the priest and the priest was there helping people giving them counsels and all these things I was like wow I, I like that I would like to be able to be helping people so I saw it as a way of helping people right. so that was the first thing that I wanted to be and at some point, I realized that um, I was uh, good at teaching. And then I was like, actually, I would like to teach. That's actually another way of helping people, right? Uh, yeah. So that. So after school, did you go to college? Yeah. So after school, I went to college after high school. Um, I used to work at, um, at a grocery store um uh called Walgreens and while I was there I had an idea I was like you know what I would like to own one of those stores you know after you know after uh college but I would also like to know how do I have a store how do I run a store and I was learning things in the store on hands but I was like maybe when I go to college I will learn this kind of things so I went to college with the idea that I'm going to learn how to have a grocery store and how to and I was so wrong I was so wrong I learned nothing about how to run a business I learned nothing about actually how to have a business I went to business school and then when I was when I realized that I wasn't learning anything about running a business and starting a business, running a business and all of that, I actually switched to my major in finance. So I did a, my bachelor's in finance. And now I'm looking back, I'm like, you know what? All that money spending going to for that first four years, maybe they should let me borrow that money to actually start a business and pay someone who already have a grocery store, pay them like $10,000 to teach me how to do all these things and then take that other, I don't know, 40, $50,000 and actually start a grocery store because that's what I wanted to do. But, well, I didn't get to learn none of that in college. <laughs> so when you finished college then, so you, you got it, you got your degree in finance. Uh-huh. What, what, what happened next then when you left? So I got my degree in, in finance. While I was there, I got an internship with a financial firm, a very well-known uh, financial firm and, uh, called Mass Mutual. So I was there working, and that was about the time of the, the of the the, uh, the um, depression, about the 
what what do they call it? The Great Depression or Recession? I don't know. That was about two thousand eight, was it? So um, I couldn't keep up because of that of the time. So I had to um, they had to let me go. So I spent uh, a good amount of time not out of work trying to find a job, and it was one of the uh, most um, the the hardest year or two of my life right. trying to find work going out of uh, you know using all of my savings and everything and until I realized you know what although I have a degree all of these things let me go back to um, where I used to be back in high school or even my early years in college I went back to the grocery store to Walgreens and um, get a job I started as a at that time I restarted a job there as a cashier. So I was at the checkout, checking people out, ringing <laughs> groceries, ringing, you know, people's medication, things like that, um, uh, with a bachelor's degree. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so that's what I was doing. And then I remember I was trying to, to go up of the ranks, trying to, to go to, to, to be an assistant, an assistant manager. I've learned everything about running the store. Yeah. I got to a position, I think they, they used to call it a team leader. I got to that position where I would be in charge of everything. I'll be in charge of opening the stores, um, in charge of employees, in charge of counting the money, the safe and all these things. I was basically kind of like doing the assistant manager's job, but not getting paid the assistant assistant manager's salary right i was trying to get to uh to that moment where i get that promotion i apply and every every time i apply they say well there's they can't they can't promote me there's a hiring freeze there was always some kind of reason i remember one day i was working and i saw somebody walked in with a uniform the the uniform that usually the assistant managers wear yeah and, and he went into the office and i'd never seen him before and after a few minutes, the store manager called, called us into the office, the other assistant manager and myself, because the position that I was in, I was always in contact with the management of the store. Right. And he introduced us to the new assistant manager. Oh, wow. I was like, I, I stood there trying to stay still, but inside of me, I, I was raging. I was saying a whole lot of things. I was mad. And then before all that ends, I didn't hear anything else. All I, all I heard after that was, uh, you know, I need you to train him. <laughs> oh, God. So. Goodness me. I, yeah, I had the responsibility to, to, to train him because one of the things I was doing, I was in charge of the inventory of the store. So that was, he wanted me to train him in all the things about inventory. So here I am knowing all the things about running and operating and managing employees in the, the entire operation of the store. I didn't get uh, the promotion, but someone else who had no clue, knew nothing, just came in and they gave him that, you know, that position I was waiting for. So I trained him, but every day I had to tell myself, there's got to be more to me than just this. Yeah. I was telling myself, there's got to be more to me than just this. I just didn't know what it was. So, and one, one day I was like, you know what? I've had enough. I wrote my resignation letter. That was the end. That, that was about December, 2012. And I left. I knew nothing. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I didn't have another job waiting for me. So you had no plan. I had no plan, no nothing. December, 2012. I was, and I just, I just left. <laughs> so, so what did you do then? What, what happened? <laughs> so, so when I left, um, I left and I was like trying to contact a few people to see what, what's next. But what I had, um, uh, someone that a friend of mine knew who had, um, who had a tax preparation firm and they say hey get in touch with them so i got in touch with them and i went and just helped i was helping and i was putting the hours helping just helping i didn't i didn't make any 
um, okay, you have to pay me this much. There was, it was not an offer. It was that I didn't ask to be paid, but I was just helping. Yep. And, and then I started getting paid. I started getting paid. And before you know it, it was like more of, okay, now we can, we can, you can be part of the team, you know? And I so was what like, was, what was the main thing you were doing there? So the main thing that I was uh, doing in there, because I, I knew about finance, so I was in, I was mostly being in touch with people who already had their businesses and helping them understanding their, um, the finances of the business, helping them with, you know, some, uh, this kind of things. All so right, right. that, that, that's where I was because that's kind of like what I knew. Yeah. And I was, oh, that's actually, that's actually something that I understand. I can help people have businesses and doing this. And that's, that's basically where um where leaving my job took me until I and then after about I don't know uh two years probably I left um I left that business and okay. and what made you leave there um it was it was kind of like a family decision we had to to go leave uh, we were leaving the state um, to go leave, uh, we're going to, to Arizona All right. and, and, um, you know, there were some internal things as well, but, uh, we had to, we had to leave and, and go to Arizona. So at that time, so here's where, like, at that time I left, I had, I didn't have, it's not like I, I, I got a job or ha I had another business, nothing. So I am so, so grateful to my wife and um, she is, I don't know how much to, to say, like how much I'm, I'm grateful to my wife because at that time I was online, you know, just scrolling Facebook and I saw an ad and the ad was for some kind of Amazon um, coaching business. So I was like, hmm, let me look at that. <laughs> and I went and I, there was a webinar. I watched the webinar. And I was like, man, that's so interesting. And we're gonna do this. <laughs> so I registered for that, for that program. But at the, at the bottom of that page, there was a little tab that caught my attention. And I clicked on it and the landing page for, for ClickFunnel came up. Uh, the powered by ClickFunnels in the yeah, bottom right. So, I got it. <laughs> so the landing page came, came on and I read, I, I watched the webinar. I read the, the whole uh, uh, landing page, the whole copy. And I was like, man, that's so interesting. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm going to, to subscribe to it. There I am, have no clue what I'm going to do. I don't really understand the whole thing, but I just know that's something that's interesting. So we ended up canceling the Amazon coaching uh, program because we didn't have, we didn't really have money to continue or to do all the things that we're supposed to, to be doing, private label and all of that. We didn't have the money to, to do that. Right. Okay. So I ended up subscribing to, to ClickFunnels and me, I don't like having the bare minimum of anything. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do the 90, the $97 a month. I'm going to do the, you know, the two ninety seven dollars a month because I want to see everything. I want to see everything about what this thing has to do. So there I was every day. I was learning everything. I was watching every webinar that Russell Bunsen has out. I was watching, taking notes. And listen, all this time, I had no clue what I was going to do. No clue what, what I was supposed to do, to do on it. My wife was working. And the savings that I had was being used, being depleted. I spent about two years paying two ninety seven a month. All right. Okay. Having nothing to put on it. All right. Okay. And actually more than two years, almost three years actually, because that was 2016, 2017. We didn't use it until like towards the end of 2018. So every month two ninety seven. All I was doing just learning. I was learning like how to write copy. I was learning how to do the funnels. I was learning like the, the webinar. I was learning every single thing. I watched so many webinars. <laughs> like if I go to Facebook and I see a webinar, I'm going to register 
And just so that I can see how people do webinars, what yeah. people, what's in there, trying to, to learn everything. And uh, eventually when we actually started our consulting firm, because we have a home care agency, when people started to ask my, my, my wife, so at that time we had the, our own home care agency. All and right, okay, we, so was that your wife's business then? Yes. The home care agency? Yeah. We, we always have, we always do our businesses together like everything that we do it's always together we don't have like one here one there okay so how did you start that then how is your wife got trained in home care or how did that come about so that came about because when she had, she was on the bedside she was pregnant with our son and we almost lost our son while she was pregnant working in the hospital so she she went on on bed rest while she was on bed rest she was like I don't want to go back to that job and it's frustrating we're like okay what what are we gonna do what can we do what can we do and then we started talking and then we're like wait a minute you went to nursing school because you actually wanted to work with the elderly so how about you still work with the elderly and we're like oh home care so that's how we started that, All that right, okay. with, yeah to work with uh with the elderly and then as as we're doing it friends and other coworkers and people start, started to see, huh, she's doing good with that. How about you help us do the same thing? So that's when we started helping people with their own home care agency. Right, and okay. It's like at the same moment, I was learning, learning everything about webinar, uh, copy, lending pages, and I was learning all these things. And then somehow the two came at the right moment. People asked us to, to, to help them. And everything that we needed to actually help them, they came at the same, like, it was like a perfect match. And then we started. Right, okay. So when you started, what did you do? So uh, with, a consult with a consulting firm? Yeah. So when we started, we, um, we started just helping people. At first, it was like for free. So yeah. we started helping people for free uh, to start their home care agencies. And then we're like, wait a minute, that's something... You know we can charge for it so we uh, someone actually um, asked to for a document and they were like uh we're willing to pay for it we're like oh we can actually get paid <laughs> so so we i put up a, 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 um, an order form for that uh for that uh payment and i think it was like 19 dollars if i if i'm not mistaken 19 dollars or 17 dollars that 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 we sold it for all now right. I'm looking back, I'm like, how did we sell that for $19? That's something that should be like $200. <laughs> anyway, that's how we charge at that time. And then they were like, oh, we can actually charge for it. And then people started asking us for a brunch. We're like, okay, let's do a brunch. So we did a brunch. We invited people to come. People actually flew to come to the brunch. And uh, the night of the brunch, the brunch was a Sunday, Saturday night, I was like in our closet. So our office literally started in our closet, in okay. our bedroom. So we had our condo and in our bedroom, the closet was our office. So that same night I was in the office with my wife, putting up to, together the presentation, like looking at what was doing, the, doing our own presentation, looking at it, doing the offer and then putting up the offer that same night. And the next morning we did the brunch they uh, kind of like the, 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 the webinar sales uh, deck, you know, sales pitch and yep. like, yeah. And the stack. They, was, they raised their hands and the rest is history. So how many people did you have at that first event? That first event, probably about like 15 people, 15 people. All right, okay. We had, we had one person sign up. So we did the, the, the brunch, about 15 people came in. We, we upsell a two day event and a two day training um, to help people just start with their home care agencies. And we had one person sign up. Okay. At that event, we're like, okay, we're going for it. <laughs> so <laughs> we're like, one person, you know, is willing to pay us, I think it was like $1,500. Well, like one person just paid us fifteen hundred dollars. This is so great! So yeah, it was a so, good feeling. That one person. So after that, what did you do then? So did you start doing webinars then, or did you carry on with the in person? 
So no, we didn't carry on with it with uh, uh, in person. So we started doing more of um, like kind of like relationship building. We started the Facebook group, and then people were just flooding the Facebook group. Um, and then we were more doing like um, uh, like coffee chat, talking to people, all right, uh, messaging people, and it was more like on a one on one uh, messaging. Um, doing coffee chat on Zoom. So we didn't start doing webinar until a little bit after. All right, okay. So how did you get people into your Facebook group? That is still a mystery. (laughs) That is still a mystery because um, people are joining. We're like, where are those people coming from? We don't know. So I think it's a combination of things, a combination of the name. So the name is very, very like search friendly. Okay. So you go to Facebook, you put home care. I bet you our name will will come up, uh, okay. probably between the first few few names. What was we'll the name? Up. What was the name of the group? It's Home Care Bosses United. Home Care Bosses United. Yeah. So that that is one thing. So if people are searching for home care on Facebook, home yeah. care group, that name is is going to 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 come up. And then the other thing is. Uh, my wife was, you know, before we had, we had our own group, she was in some other groups, nurses group, home care groups, okay. and she was giving values, like literally giving values because we didn't really intend to start a business. Yeah. And she was giving values, just answering people's questions, giving them tips and things that they can do. And more and more people started to see her as that, as an authority in the subject. Right. And, and so when we um, had the group, people were just floating and we didn't advertise it. We didn't say anything about the group. Actually, the group started because I had a friend of mine who wanted help and I linked my wife with that friend and my wife was like, you know, I don't really have much time to be on a call with you all the time. Let me do a Facebook group for the two of us so that if you have anything, you can put it in the group. When I have time, I'll go back and we can communicate in the Facebook group just for the two of us <laughs> just for the two and it was literally for the two of them that the group was for and before we know it people were asking to join the group we didn't know how to manage a group how to do all these things it was just like for the two of them and the rest is actually history now <laughs> have like almost 8500 people today all right okay so you were nurturing them in the group so is this so people come in you were nurturing them then you were chatting in the DMs. Yeah. And then what did you do? Get them on a Zoom call. So we, we at that time, we're not doing Zoom calls yet. It was mostly like from there. People right. at, at some point we went on a phone call. So before social selling became a thing, like, yeah. you know, to, like we were actually doing it. <laughs> like <laughs> you guys ago doing, you know, a, a chatting in the, in the DM and then doing the, all, all these social selling things, we were doing that. And then um, it wasn't until after, so we actually brought them on a phone call. Once we started talking, some people actually bought from, from there. All right. It was a phone call. And then after a little bit, we realized, you know what, let's kind of like do it where in an environment where we can have more uh, people at the same time. And not really a webinar, but uh, some kind of uh, way to talk to more people and then we started doing like coffee chats okay so how much was your how much was your first offer then that you were selling the first offer was 14 15, uh, 15.99 and that was to help them get their um their their license because in, in the u.s most home in most states um home care agencies need a license all right to, to, to function and they get the license from the state. So we help them with that process, giving them all the documents and everything that they need. Now I'm looking back, I'm like, how did we charge for $1,500 for something that some places are literally charging $40,000 for? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we didn't know what we didn't know. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Hindsight is a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was the first funnel then? That you got the comma the two comma club with what funnel were you using for that so it's that that's the same funnel that we started we sold on the first day of uh on the day of the brunch yeah. for people to 
um, to the to the webinar, and then I'm uh, not to the webinar to the um, to the two-day event where they we get them to to do their their home care agencies. So we modified things along the way. So it was a two-day, and then it became a three-day, and then it became uh, a longer um, working relations. And then we had to increase the price, do a mastermind in the back end. And, but it was the same funnel. We modify things as we go, modify the message, uh, the copy, the presentation. And then we started doing webinars. And then that even, uh, that uh, took things uh, a lot faster along the way. All right, okay. And did you run paid ads at all or was it all just coming filter through from the Facebook group? So we ran paid ads for about a year. I would say in the beginning, we were, well, no, not in the beginning. We did paid ads about 2019 to 2020 because we stopped after the election. So it was about a year we okay. ran paid ads. So, uh, we did. So I was the copy for the ad and we had, so we had that same copy for the entire time. We never changed it. We never touched it. It was the same ad. Um, we didn't change anything the entire time. So it was running the same ad. So all we did change the date for the webinar every, we started doing the webinar every month. So every month we just went in there, changed the date. That's it. It was the same copy for the landing page every month. Um, go ahead and change the date, keep it running. So we never touch it. It was like, just keep it running. Um, somehow, y'all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the webinar then, were you sending people straight to a checkout form or were you getting them on a phone call? So we were selling straight from the webinar. So we did the webinar, do all the different parts of the webinar, do the presentation and then do... Uh, 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 um, do the sales presentation and give them the link, call to action. People um, enroll right then and there, people paid. Um, and uh, we did the follow-up after that. So we had a system where we do follow-up after that. We call everyone who came on the webinar, see you know what is holding them back and doing the follow-ups. We, we had a few more people enrolling uh, um, after the webinar. All right. Okay. So who was doing the phone calls? Were you doing the phone calls or did you have a, a salesperson? No, my wife was doing the phone call. So for many years, until probably last year, 2021, it was literally the two of us. All right. Okay. So if we're running things. Every now and then we would have like a, 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 a contractor to come in, do one thing or two for us. But it was mainly like I would do the the I would do the funnels, do the copies for all the copy ads, presentation, and posts, and all of that. And my wife would be um, well, kind of like still today. She's the the main person. That's the person that ev everyone sees. She does the the live, the the calls, the webinars, and follow up calls. So she was on the phone. So she worked a whole lot. Yeah. Like she would work tirelessly um, all the time. So she's the attractive character, as Russell calls it. Yes, yes. Yeah? So she's the attractive character. Um, so she is that, yeah. Cool. So do you think there's been a time where you felt like giving up, that it was so difficult that you thought, we're not doing this? Yeah, several time? times. Several times that happened, several times. Uh, when you feel like, you know what, you're putting so much work and you're not seeing the traction yet, you're not seeing anything yet, and it feels like, huh, I could have gotten a paycheck this Friday from someone else, right? <laughs> so when you're not seeing the traction, when you're not seeing the money, right, and you know you're putting the work and you're not seeing the money yet, and it feels like, my goodness, what am I doing? And then you see, and then the money comes after, right? And then you get to that next stage, where you get to that exact same plateau, you say, okay, I've been putting so much work. What's going on? I can't get to the next step. So, and then you get to the next step and that's basically, so you've kind of like learned. So the first year you make X amount of money. 
the following year, you already know how to make that money. So you're going to cruise through it. Getting past that amount, that is where you like the 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 where it's like okay i want to give up because i don't know how to get to the, to the next step perseverance keep going at it you you make it and then the next time it's like you get to that same point it's like man how do i get past that stage because everything that i that you work with for example everything that we've done that got us to a million dollars we can do that again very fast, very easily. We can do it again. Once we get to that stage and then you want to go to the next step, now it becomes hard because you are in unknown territory. Yeah. This is where I feel like, you know what, I want to give up because I can get to that next stage, right? It's unknown territory. So this is kind of like, it's almost like where we are now. Like we've, we've, we've been having that conversation. Okay, this year, everything that we've done last year, We've now already accomplished them within those first uh, um, six months of, of 2022. So now how do we get to the next stage? It's like, this is unknown territory and how do we go to that? So and do, you have, um, do you have a coach or a mentor to help you get through that? So we didn't really have coaches getting through where we were. So at some point, so, let me, let, let me say this. We, we've had a few helps, a few coaches. So we, we had a storytelling coach that taught us how to, uh, how to use stories um, in business for right. stories, uh, um, story selling. Yeah. Uh, we've had that. And then uh, we, use, we had a business coach for probably about six months um, d- during that entire time. It was like six months. And most of it, we had to... Now I'm looking back, I'm like, maybe we should have had a business coach the entire time. So right now we just enrolled into a mastermind that is excellent um, because community, having people who are also pushing for the same thing, um, it's important. So we just place ourselves in the awesome community right now. All right. Okay. So what do you think has been your biggest hurdle that you've overcome on your journey so far? Biggest hurdle, I think, um, we've had issues with, um, I know a lot of people will be like, I would love to have that problem. Well, <laughs> it's having too many leads. Um, okay. So, well, you, ha- you couldn't cope with that? Yeah. So we had so many leads where it was, because it was only my wife doing the calls. So right. we had so many leads and I was, I started helping with the calls as well, but we couldn't keep up really like we were, there was a time where we were doing a webinar almost, um, uh, it was every month and we would have about 100 people coming onto the webinar just for the webinar, not counting people who are in our environment already that we need to reach out to, people who are joining the group. So to do follow-up calls with 100 people and then, so we, we were, we had too many leads too fast and we couldn't really take advantage of them. So it was frustrating. It was like frustrating. I'm having so many leads, but I can't take advantage of it. So that was um, a big issue So uh, for us. And it was also a learning um, um, a moment because we didn't have things in place prior to that. We didn't have things in place to bring in um, a salesperson. So, that was really frustrating having so many leads. You, you see the money, you see the money sitting. People are joining, people are literally like joining and they want the service. It's like the money's there, but we couldn't get through people fast enough to, to make the money. So the people, the people that were coming through, were they all like nurses already and things like that? Was that, who was the actual audience that was coming through? Yeah, so most of them are nurses, um, whether it's uh, they are RN or LPN and some CNAs, but we've also had people who, are, who have no clue about the, um, the, the healthcare industry. We, we have, we, we've had teachers, railroad workers. Um, uh, yeah, we've had, uh, we, well, we have, we, we've also had medical doctors so we had people from all walks of life. Uh, all right, okay. Um, yeah, accountant. 
<laughs> yeah. So, have you got a morning routine that you do every day? Um, yes, it changes. It changes sometimes. Um, uh, but our current morning routine is mainly I wake up, I stay in the bed for a little bit where um, I'm praying is just me connecting with God, um, um, being grateful, expressing gratefulness, thanksgiving. And then um, after that, when we wake up, we spend time, like my wife and I, we would spend time separately um, uh, reading from, from our Bible. When we're done, then we connect, we kind of like share, okay, why did you read what that meant to you? So we connect, we share things. And then after that, we'd pray together. And then uh, we jump into, into business. All right, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what's your focus now for the rest of this year and beyond? So the focus for the rest of this year, we have six months. It's literally um, making these six months the equivalent of, of at least five years. So that's the focus. Right. Okay. The, okay, what, what is the goal we want to achieve between the next five to 10 years? How do, I, how, how do we get it done within the six months coming? So the, that's the focus of, um, we have a software that we, we are going to launch. Um, so we need to launch that software grow the, um, the, the consulting firm, bringing in more people, like in, in terms of our um, staff hiring. Okay. We've hired a lot of people lately. We have probably 12 people on, on, on staff now. All and right, okay. Some other um, uh, contractors that service us on and off. So it's having the team, having the team that can sustain the vision we have for the next six months. And the vision is like, we're not working for six months. Six months is, is really like a week or two. So we're not working for six months. We, we are literally working for the next five to 10 years. And what the team that we need to have in place to support five to 10 years of work in six months. So that's the goal. All right, okay. So I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. If you were gonna be an animal for 24 hours, what would you be and why? Um, an eagle. An eagle. Yeah. Okay, and why is that? So I literally, so that's interesting. I literally had a dream the other day um, about an eagle. So I had a dream, I was somewhere and um, uh, my wife was there and we we're talking and there was an eagle coming and someone said there was a lady there. The lady said, uh, uh, put your head out. And then my wife put her, her head out and the eagle came in and the eagle just um, put her, uh, uh, I don't know, her or, or, or his claws Close, yeah. uh, around my, uh, 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 my wife's hand. Uh, I mean, arm picked up and just flew away with my wife. And <laughs> they went on a journey flying very, very high. And there was a time I was looking, I didn't see anything. And then after a while, I saw them coming back and the eagle came back and dropped off at the same uh, <laughs> at that spot. So I was like, wow, um, that's a great journey. That's a great journey flying high with the eagle. So I would want to be an eagle. Awesome. So if anybody's interested in finding out more about what you do, where do they need to go? So uh, where do they need to go? They can go to, uh, they can uh, find me on Facebook, um, Enoch Dennis um, on Facebook, Instagram at Enoch Dennis one on Instagram. So that's how they will be able um, to get in touch with me. Awesome. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking time out of your day and joining me today. I'm sorry, say, say it again. I just got cut off.
Uh, thank you so much for joining Below the Iceberg today and taking the time out of your day. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for the invite. And, and I, uh, um, I pray that the audience, whoever is listening, they get at least one thing, one thing only that can help them uh, move forward to the next step. It doesn't have to be everything that was said. We only need one thing. That's it. We only need one thing to implement and see drastic, drastic change. So uh, thank you. Thank you for, for your time. I really appreciate it. So true. Just one golden nugget will do. Yes. <laughs> thank you for listening. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the podcast on your podcast software. It really helps us rank the podcast and get more listeners. And if you're over on YouTube, please subscribe and hit the bell. Every Friday, 8 a.m. GMT, we release a brand new episode. And until then, have a good one.